Hi, I'm Shane Boxland. Today we're going to be showing you how we use the teleboom to lift different objects. A typical object that this is used for is rafters for a building like the one behind me. But you can also use it for lifting trees or other objects over and beyond obstructions such as ditches or fences. It's constructed of three separate sections. The main section is four by four square tubing. The inner section is three and a half inch square tubing and the outer section is three inch square tubing. As you can see we have a cylinder here for operating between sections one and two. The cylinder has a 72 inch stroke so you're going to get six feet of stroke and on the second section we have manual pin joints here so you can go with two foot increments out another six feet. So you can get between 18 and 22 feet of reach depending on the angle and the size of your skid steer loader. Now, depending on how many sections you have extended, uh, we have a load chart, a very simple load chart that's on a decal on the attachment. And we've made it very simple for the operators. We say that if the uh, attachment is fully extended, both sections one and two, the lift capacity is about 350 pounds. If you have the outer section in and then extend the cylinder section out fully, we have a lift capacity of 650 pounds. And if you have all the sections fully contracted inside the main tube, then the lift capacity is 750 pounds. That's regardless of the angle. So it can be horizontal at a 45 or nearly vertical. We're just playing it safe. We're using conservative numbers. Now obviously you have to have this attached to a decent sized skid steer loader. Um, we'd like to have it uh, attached to a, something heavier like 1800 or more rated operating capacity. That's 1800 pounds. Um, obviously the lighter the skid steer loader, the less capacity you can lift here. Uh, but for the heavy skid steers of about 1800 ROC and above, uh, those lift capacities should be safe. Whenever using this attachment, you need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, definitely overhead power lines are a big uh, safety concern. Also the stability of the attachment with the skid steer loader. You want to make sure that you're on level, solid ground, um, that you don't, you're not driving through uh, uneven terrain where there might be potholes or soft spots. If you have the load fully extended up in the air, obviously it's not as stable. So you want to be careful when you're doing that. So we use a simple hitch pin for the outer section. For the lifting point, we have a simple clevis style. We don't supply this with a hook uh, for the main reason being that the contractors and people that use this uh, use it for different means and they want their own custom hooks. So we just supply it with a simple clevis and a three quarter inch hitch pin. So it's really easy to operate. You can put chain through here or some kind of lift eye if you need. Lifting straps, uh, whatever you need to suit your specific task. So the construction of this uh, is very specific to, the, to its task. Um, this is because it has to uh, withstand the loads when it's lifting and these loads are concentrated along this tube. So what we have here is a foreign piece of quarter inch plate steel. It's solid welded to the mounting plate and we have wedge bar reinforcements here so that there's no uh, danger of anything cracking or breaking off. We also have a lift eye here if you want to carry this around or put it on a truck or something. This is right over the center of gravity of the teleboom. And we also have a, a nice uh, foot pad here so that when you set this down it doesn't tip over. So um, when this is rolled back this becomes level and it's really nice to climb in and out using this step uh, on either side. So really convenient. So today we just simulated lifting a rafter up for this building. These rafters are actually a little oversized for this attachment. Um, I'm, the, the weight wasn't the main concern, it was the height. So this particular building we have 16 foot sidewalls and I think 
to the peak is another 12. Uh, it's a 60 foot span. We did want to show you a simulation of what you would be doing if you picked a rafter and carried it. Um, so just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So one key feature about this jib hoist that is not very obvious, but um, in the base port of the cylinder, we have a, a fitting with a small restrictor in it. And that restrictor serves two purposes. First of all, it slows down the speed with which the cylinder uh, extends or contracts. That gives you better control over minute adjustments in height when you're setting your rafters or moving your whatever. But the second reason that restrictor is there is so that if you ever had a catastrophic failure where a fitting broke or a hose busted or something, the cylinder wouldn't come crashing down at full speed. It would be slowly compressing as the oil was squeezed out of the orifice. So this is a, a nice little safety feature with this teleboom. Thanks for joining us today as we operated this teleboom. Hopefully you got a good understanding of how to operate it safely and also the construction of it. Uh, be sure to join us later as we make more videos and check in with our website or give us a call if you have any other questions.